The S&P 500 now is up 38% from the October 2023 low. Two distinct uptrends have taken place to get us there. We're going to look at both of these closely and at the end of the video, discuss one specific stat that happened at the end of last week, which we have not seen before. So we know there are two uptrends. If you've been following the market closely, we know that the first one was from October through the end of March, and then again from April to right now. And so let's compare both of these rallies. Looking at this from a percent basis, from October to March, the market was up about 28%. And that was over the course of 99 trading days until the top was in, and then we have the pullback, of course, through the middle of April. And from that point, we're up about 15% thereabouts in 55 trading days. So simple math tells us that that pace is pretty similar. And now along the way, as we know, coming back, the gripe was that it couldn't continue higher. We know the first time we got an overbought reading was in November. And with the pullbacks being so marginal, people just thought at some point this all of this would unravel completely. Which of course it didn't until we got the 6% sell off from late March to April. And then as we know from that point, again, just really picked up where it's left off with the last few weeks, the biggest complaint being that market was top heavy. And we reviewed a lot of that in the last video. Of course, over the last few days, things have changed from that stance as well. And so overall, that has given us again, a 38% rally over the course of nine months. And we analyze that that's a 50% return over a 12 month period, which would be among the best we've seen in history. No surprises there. And so to really get an idea of when things are going to change, again, we look at the short term first because that's the first time we're going to see some sort of momentum shift if it's happening. You know, this chart has really been helpful along the way, and we can you know, take those two uptrends and those two big rallies and really get granular with this and look at how each one of these has taken place over a number of weeks. And really, it's been between 3% and 7% from the very beginning over and over again. As we can tell, there were more than a handful of them so far. And so the common characteristic here is that almost every time these moves were strong enough to produce an overbought reading on this 14 period RSI using a two hour chart. So very short term. And again, that happened 10 different times. We saw higher highs, higher lows each time, the break here, and then repeating the same thing once again. And so on the downside, even more importantly, is that the pullbacks along the way, we know they've been slight, have only been bad enough to produce oversold readings just two times, right? Not surprising that happened during the March-April period. And then recall at the end of May, it was, it was kind of a, a strong sell-off until that May 31st reversal that also produced a very quick oversold reading and right back to where we are now. And so would it be surprised to see this pull back again at some point? And we know that eventually we're going to see an oversold reading on a short term once more. And at that point, it's going to be about the reaction to that pullback is will be much more significant. And so trading boxes, this has quickly become one of our favorite charts just because it's been so good at framing the price action really over the last year, but specifically from the October low here, where we know that the market has been up again, we just we talked about it nearly 40% in nine months. But even though it seems like at some points that it's been nonstop, it's really just it's been about a number of multiple weeks of trading ranges, followed by sharp moves, pauses, sharp moves, pauses again. So most of the time, we can argue from this perspective, the market has been in a trading range. And so the important part about it is that we know most of them have been resolved to the upside. In fact, if you look at this closely, there have been 11 completed trading boxes since the October low, 10 of them in blue, very easy to see, have been breakouts, one being a breakdown. Again, the significant part here is that that did not result in a major momentum rollover at that point, even though if you look at this point here, we know this was could have been a major top. We had talked about it at the time being a potential bearish pattern. We know that all of the potential bearish patterns so far have not played out, but that was the biggest one to get through. And of course, right now we're still under construction for the next one. And we treat each of these independently because at some point 
one will have to break down lower and we'll see what happens from there. But, you know, thinking that any pause is going to be a major top, we know it really has not been the right way to play this market, which continues to take advantage of any weakness along the way. And so one thing that changed since the last video is breath. We recall that we're, we looked at the advanced decline line uh, now compared to say what was going on back in the spring, showing that the S&P 500 has been of course extending higher, making new highs since, since the middle of May or June. And the advanced decline line had topped out in May and hadn't made a new high again. Well, things have changed because now we've had new highs suddenly in the advanced decline line as well, which now is matching the S&P 500. So we have a confirmation from a breath side where it looked for a good part of the last number of weeks, the reverse was happening. Now we talked about how the best thing the S&P was able to do over that time was have really strong breath days in, in periods when technology was the lagging sector, right? Eight straight times that it happened. And so that's good. And now we were taking it one step further. So the question is like, how did this change so quickly? Well, we saw three straight days with 80% advancing stocks to end the week last week. And if you go back and look, which we did, you know, all the breadth numbers for the S&P 500 since the start of this rally, again, in October of last year, this is the first time where we had three straight days of 80% advancing stocks, right? So that tells you how quickly things have changed and how willing buyers have been to step in, even when the biggest names have taken a break. And that resulted in 84% of the stocks last week moving higher, which was the second best reading of the entire year and the best since the week ending May 3rd. And so from a pattern perspective, we still have the big one in place, 6,100 target, and still waiting for the next short-term formation to take shape. In the meantime, seeing this rotation, of course, is the most important thing. And if the market is going to keep up this pace, we'll need to see this continue in the weeks and months to come. That's it for today. Check out these videos and subscribe. I'll talk to you next time. Thank you.